for today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic so the topic we want to talk about today is about the finite automata and you know already we talked about we started with the with the languages and the strings you remember um, we had different types of the languages in that hierarchy you remember we had inside the hierarchy different types of the grammars languages and machine etc from type 0 to type 3 if we go to uh, uh, let's jump to the course website if we go to week 3 uh, if we go to week, uh, uh, week 3 final programming and Haskell no that was in week number 2 yeah into the grammars if you remember we had it in here different uh, hierarchies in Chomsky hierarchy different kind of the languages grammars etc so for example if we jump to the grammar it should be very toward to the very end something like that yeah so if you remember here we had the type 0 recursively enumerable uh, different kind of languages and then we had a little bit more restricted version which was the context sensitive and then we had a little bit more restrictive again a subset of this kind of the languages which was context free languages and then finally the regular ones so an a string of the regular languages is definitely an a string of the uh, all of the others uh, bigger sets of the languages but the other way around is not true i mean a language string of this language is not necessarily a string of this kind of languages uh, like i mentioned in the previous sessions we have a very good correspondence between all of these things languages grammars strings machines so when we talk about the regular one we have the regular uh, expressions we, or strings we have the regular languages we have regular grammar we have regular machine so and that's the case for all other these stuff for so that was a kind of a recap from the previous weeks we talked about and you remember that that week we talk about the grammars and stuff etc so in this week we will face with uh, we will go through the type 3 things so type 3 grammars languages and automatas that's interesting and new things we want to talk about okay so uh, in terms of the automatas finite automata are the automata are abstract machines that we use in type 3 things when we are remember that when we are in type 3 things in the Chomsky hierarchy the machine we use in this kind of the uh, stuffs in hierarchy is finite automata okay so when we talk about the finite automata that means we are talking about the uh, type 3 things okay so in finite automata or finite automaton or finite state automaton is an abstract computing device you remember the automata and the automata is kind of abstract computing devices very uh, similar to the real world we have computer in the real world computer in real world the uh, computers in real world do a lot of computation for us but in terms of theory we have abstract abstract computing devices that does the same thing for us so finite automata is a kind of abstract computing devices that receives a string of symbols as input and reads the string one symbol at a time from left to the right and halts after reading the last symbol okay so i have a string you remember i have a string inside the language okay that string might belong to that language or it might not belong to my to that language do you remember in here again let's back to this this picture in here you remember i had characters i had strings and then the strings could be in two different classes of ungrammatical strings and grammatical strings <clears throat> grammatical strings are strings that comply with the grammar of that specific language okay so imagine i have a string which is compatible with the grammar of my specific type of language and then if I give, if I take, if I receive that specific set of characters as a string for the input, machine read that string one by one, one symbol at a time, go ahead, it's called the head. 
now the head of machine uh, is on A location. Then it moves toward the right, head would be on B, then move, uh, moves toward the right, head would be in here, head would be in here until get to the last string, okay? Read the symbols from the left to right. That's the nature of finite automata. We will have other kind of abstract devices or abstract machines in other types of the uh, hierarchy, Chomsky hierarchy that may can move to the left also. So, but this kind of machine, finite automata only move from left to right. And it goes one by one, reads one by one the characters of the string which are in front of the head, this guy is called head. And these guys are on the tape in the real world, okay? The characters are on the tape. That's the head of the head of the machine, reads uh, one by one toward the end and until it gets to the last character and stops there, okay? So at any point, at any point in time, a finite state automata, which is called also FSA, it could called FA finite automata, or finite state automata is in a particular state. So apart from the input, apart from the concept of the reading, one symbol at a time, moving toward the right until get to the last symbol, we have another concept which is called the state. Machine would be on a specific state. When machine wants to read something from the tape is in a specific state. And then after reading the characters one by one, machine may move to other states. So then our machine or our automata might have different finite number of possible states. How SFA runs? Okay, so that's the question. How machine moves from state Q0 to Q1, Q2, and so on? So that's the story of this guy. How FSA runs depends on a program made of instruction. So the FSA reads the input symbol one by one, and the instructions determine instructions determine how FSA should change from one state to another state. So and I have so then I have states. I have instruction. That instruction will tell me after reading this guy when I am in this state I should go where, and then I get to this this guy. I'm in the same state on a new state. Then instruction will tell me. If, I, if you are in a specific state, you will get this input, you will go where, okay? So that's the whole story. There are two special kind of the state, initial state, Q0, and the final state, okay? We will have only one final state, sorry, initial state. In the finite automata or finite state automata, we will have only one initial, single initial state. And we might have multiple final state. A run of an FSI or computation always begins in the initial state. You always start from the initial state. Machine all the time, when it wants to take a string, this machine wants to take a string, and then afterward it takes another string, another string, another string, no matter how many number of strings the machine will receive. Or whenever machine receives a string, it starts from state Q0, which is called the initial state, okay? And then a run of an FSA or computation always begins in the initial state. There is a specific site of the set of final states. So like I say, single initial state, but any number of final state. You might want to see my picture also. Maybe it will help you to have, get a good connection to my face too. Okay, so like I said, single state as the initial state, but multiple final state is possible. If a computation ends in one of the final state, then machine accept that input. Otherwise, machine reject that input. Let's back to this definition again here. As you can see in here, uh, let's zoom a little bit to get to this picture. Like I said, we have characters, we have strings, and out of all the possible strings, some of the strings are inside the language we are defining and some other stuff they are not. So in here, the machine try to get a string and see if that string is accepted by that language or not. So that's an interesting point of the uh, automatas or abstract machines. Those automatas and abstract machine can generate strings 
or words for that specific languages. But what they need to know is they need to know how many number of state they have, <clears throat> what is the initial state, how many number of finite state do we have, what are the instructions or functions to let us know how to go from one specific state to another one and so on. But at the end of the day, machine will accept a specific uh, string or it will reject it. That's the whole story. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Initial state is Q0. Set of states are Q0 and Q1. Imagine this machine has two states. Imagine the machine has a final state of Q1 and we have a set of instructions to go from states to states by getting different, uh, different characters inside the string. Okay, so let's talk about the instruction a little bit. <clears throat> instruction are the form of QI, X, QJ. That means I'm in a state QI or Anyway, machine is still in the state QI. Machine receives character X and will go to state QJ. QI is called from state and QJ is called to state and X called a symbol. Okay, instruction interpretation is like that. If FSA or final state, finite state machine automata is in state QJ, that's exactly what I described. I don't need to read through these things. Okay, the instruction for the new current symbol and the new current states are then carried out and so on. So that's the whole story. Let's look, have a look at an example, good example in here. So I have this machine, initial state is Q0, final state is Q1, and these are the instructions. I'm a, if I'm in state Q0, I receive symbol A, I will go to Q0, okay? Let's machine then move to in here because our machine has read already this character. Then what would be the state in here? Q0. Why? Because it's a, it says when you are in a state Q0, you receive A, you will be in Q0. So Q0, receive A, then I would be in Q0. Then I'm in Q0, I will receive B. B. I'm in Q0, I will receive B, I will go to QA. So here then it would be Q1. And I'm ready to read symbol A. Then it will say if you are in Q1, which I'm here at the moment, you receive symbol A, which is this symbol, I will go to QA. So then here a state would again would be QA because I'm in QA, I receive A, then I would be in QA. I am in QA, receive A, and I will go to QA. And then when I'm QA, I receive B, I will go to Q0. So I would be in Q1 in here, I receive A, I will go to QA again, so I will go to QA again, okay? And then when I receive B, when I am QA, I will go to Q0. So if the machine accept or reject this string, let's review again, Q0, A, Q0, A, it would be Q0, so it, here it would be Q0, then Q0, B would be Q1, Q0, B would be Q1, Q1A, Q1A would be Q1, so here again would be Q1, Q1B, sorry, Q1A again would be Q1, so here it would be Q1, Q1 and B will be go to Q0. I finished the symbol, but I'm not in the final state. So this string is rejected by this machine. In other words, that's not a valid string or a valid word of this this uh, language so it will go in here this specific string okay okay so that's exactly the, the same story it tries to review the thing for us in this slide and see uh, will it be accepted or rejected so it tries to go to us, go us what is it? tell us what to say okay so fsa and non-fsa non-deterministic so that's um, uh, a kind of a categorization in here. Like I said, automatas are tools to recognize the string of languages. Investigation, what autom automata does, investigates a string from left to right and accept or reject a string. And there is a mathematical model. Automatas are mathematical models for real computers. Okay. And then uh, different kind of automatas according to Chomsky hierarchy. We, have, we are facing with the FA or finite automatas, which is for type 0. We have pushdown automatas, which is for type 1 in the hierarchy. 
we are facing with linear bounded automata which is for uh, type 2 they are uh, what is the function of this guy accept or reject an output uh, push down they have uh, limited memory they accept or receive they have two-sided limited memory uh, they are able to readable they are readable and writable and Turing machine we have which have limited memory okay and readable and writable for this week we are going through this guy like we have started already like I said this guy FA is for type 3 push down automata PDA for type 2 LBA is for type 1 and Turing machine is for type 0 languages the finite automata can be divided in two different categories deterministic finite automata and non-deterministic finite automata we will talk about that what we have talked about by far in here has been uh, dfa deterministic uh, could be deterministic uh, kind of finite automata but it could be on un deterministic like i said uh, finite automata are defined by different things it could be this guy could be capital q the state of the machine the alphabet we take the instruction or transfer function to move from a state to a state the initial or start state beginning state and f which is final state that's the whole story of the things okay so let me see yeah let's continue in here as it was okay so what if we have we have more than one rule then could be applied to a particular point in an fsa okay so what condition could this happen in so we are trying to say what is the deterministic and what is the non-deterministic then in the deterministic let's go in here that's much easier in the deterministic case if you are in a specific state we have uh, this restriction that you should define all the things what are the alphabet in here alphabet are a and b okay anyway that's the another way of uh, visualization of the automata you can show the state by the circles the initial circles the final state final states could be double circle so that means that's the final state that could be an initial state anyway it, it needs to have uh, an arrow in here like an arrow in here well like I said that's if if that's a deterministic finite automata in the deterministic finite automata you need to say if the alphabet is a b and if you are in state a you need to determine what happens if you receive a and what will happen if you receive b if you don't define this guy and only talk about what happens if you receive a that means it's not deterministic in deterministic you need to define if i'm in q0 what happens i have definition for a i have definition for b if i'm in q1 i have definition for a i have definition for b so that's a dfa deterministic uh, finite state automata if i don't have some of these things if i have all, also definition for null character empty character it would be non-deterministic finite state uh, machines okay so what if more than one rule or even in non-deterministic it could be more than one rule i mean if you have a if you have b also you could say if i have a also i can here by a i can go here and also by a i can go in here so that's non-deterministic too okay so what condition could this happen in let's read it again uh, what if more than one rules that could be applied at a particular point in an FSA? Like I said, in a specific state, by receiving in a specific character, you can go to different states. Already we, we said, if we are in a state Q0, like in here, if you are in Q0, if we receive A, definitely we'll go to Q0. There is no other case of being in a state Q0, receiving A and going somewhere else. No, it was impossible. But in non-deterministic, it is the case if you are in q0 if you receive a you have options okay that could be something like we would have uh, to have the same from state and input symbol with multiple possible to a state such fsa are called non-deterministic i added some other things also on top of that i said it could be the case you don't have any definition for a specific character also you, you might have the definition of being in a specific state and receiving uh, empty 
So it is possible in non-deterministic. But in deterministic, which is similar to this one, you need to have all the definition, single definition, and so on. Okay. So we will deal with the deterministic FSA first of all, each from a set and reading symbol, and then we will go to non-deterministic cases. Okay. So a state diagram. Like I said, you can show the machine with the state diagram. This guy is called the state diagram. In a state diagram, you have symbols like in the circles. You have the arrows that shows you you go from this state to this state and also you have uh, this guy for example is exactly the same as this guy you are in state qi you receive symbol x you go to state qj initial state are shown with this guy or even it could have a line inside it that's okay and the final state has a double circle like we discussed it here so for this machine we can draw the uh, we can draw the a state diagram how we can write a state diagram we can say uh, we are in a state q0 so you can have a, a state q0 in here then you can say if i receive a i go to q0 then it would be like that okay then i say if i state q receive b q0 i receive b i will go to q1 so if i am in q0 i receive b i will go to a state q1 okay then I state Q1, I receive A, I will go to Q1. If I am in Q1, I receive A, I will back to Q1. And also, if I am in Q1, I receive B, I will back to Q0. So if I am in here, I receive B, I should back in here. That's exactly what we talk about in here. We were in Q0, we used to receive a little bit difference. It, was, it should be A in here. We used to be in Q0, receive A, we will go in here. If we receive B, we will go in here. If we receive, if we are in Q1, we receive A, we will be in here. If we receive B, we will back to Q0. So that's called a state diagram for this, okay? Initial state, final state, and the instruction. And that's exactly what we talked about. The initial state, this guy is initial state. Why? Because we have the arrow in here. By taking A, we will be in here. By taking B, we will go in here. By receiving A in this state, we will back to this state and we will be in here. That's exactly the same thing. So I received a question. Let's go to the question. Uh, Kipran says, so Q1 do doesn't mean the last character of the string. No, Q1 is the final state. In final state, the string might be 10 characters. We might move in the final state and go back to some other places and again, stay in here. The only matter of the the only matter of the final state is if I'm in the final, if I'm receiving the last character, I should ask this question from myself. Is the um, state is the final state when I'm in the last character? If the answer is yes, I will say boom stamp. The string is accepted by the machine. If I'm in the last state, if I'm in the last character where the state is not the final state, reject. I reject the string. So the answer to your question is Q1 doesn't mean the last character of the string. Yes, Q1 is a state, but that's a final state. But the, from the final state, I may back to other state, move a little bit around, and then again get in here. That's completely okay. But the one which is not okay, like I said, is if I receive the last character, I'm not in the final state. This guy is not accepted okay okay so is there a rule about the number of a's and b's allowed in a string so see we can have the rules and visualize the machine create the machine we can do the other way around also we can have a machine and see if we can generate the rules that should be okay too okay is there a rule about the number of a's and b's allowed in a string accepted by the fsa represented by the above state diagram so there are two things we need to discuss in here the first thing in here is if i have a machine like that state diagram like that i can't generate the rules how to generate the rules so easy i will start from q0 q0 a is q0 q0 b is q1 Q1A is Q1. Q1B is Q0. So that's the regulation. I received another question from Jeff. Do you only apply a rule once for each character? That's a very good question. Let me back in here. Like I said, that's the string you have. That string is on tape. And your machine has a head. Head 
looks at a specific character on the tape. After reading a specific character, it moves one toward the right. And then head would be the next one. So the answer to your question is, do you only apply a rule once for each character? Uh, that was the reading. Your question says, if that's a deterministic one, yes. The answer to question is yes. If that's a deterministic one, like this one, that's yes. If you are in a specific state, you have only one rule for each character. You cannot say, I'm Q0, I receive A, I will go to Q0, I'm Q0, I receive A, I will go somewhere else. If that happens, that's non-deterministic. If that's deterministic, for a specific state, for a specific input character, you have only one rule. So the answer to your question, Jeff, is if it is deterministic, the answer is yes. If it is non-deterministic, the answer is no. Being in a specific state, we can receive this different kind of the, the same character quite a few times and generate different rules. How? Like we saw somewhere in here. Where was that? Uh, I have lost that. You, you saw what I'm talking about. Anyway. So where we were... Okay, let me see. Let me see, we were here, final state, okay, we talk about this guy, we talked about this guy, we talk about this guy, and this guy rejected, I've accepted, oh, we, talk, we were talking about something in here. So, I say, from, uh, from, from the definition of the machine, what was the definition of the machine? Definition of the machine was this guy. Definition of the machine was this guy. You have the state, you have the alphabet, term function, uh, initial state, and final state. Okay, so from the definition of the machine, you can have the state diagram. From the state diagram, you can have the definition. That's the two way road. Okay, two sided road. What the question is here is there a rule about the number of A's? That's a very good question. What does it mean? What does it mean? A rule about the number of A's and B's allowed in a string. To be accepted okay this machine is tries to accept some string and reject some other strings so what does it mean is there a rule about the number of a's and b's what, what was the rules about the number of a's and b's in co in our course in in this module is there anyone answer for this question i will ask the question again then what does it mean when i'm talking about rule about the number of a's and b's it means a grammar, it means a language, it means a language, right? It means a language and grammar. Look at that. Let me bring you somewhere here for you. Let me bring you here somewhere. Look at this guy. What does it mean? That that means the, the language. That means a language. You can show a language with a string like that. What is, does it mean? What does it mean? Let me close this guy to stop uh, notifications. Okay. What does it mean? That's a language. It means in this language, I can take character A and B. What else does it mean? It means I can generate strings from this language. How I can generate strings from this language, okay? So I can show a language by strings like that. You know what does it mean? Star means you can take zero or more than zero of these things. Uh, but if it is plus, it means you should take at least one or more than one. So what does it mean? It means since the whole thing has a star, it means has a star, it means you can take anything. So that's MT could be a string for this language. You can take one. What does it mean? You, take, you can take one of these things. Since it's, it's plus in here, it means you can take this guy or you can take one from this guy. If I want to take from this guy, that means I can have A. So A is a string from this language, whatever language it is. Let's go beyond. I can take, it is star, that means I can take 0, 1, 2, and so on from this thing. I want to take two of these things. The first thing I took, it was A. So I have A then. Then what else I can take from here? I want to take something from this guy in here. B has 1. That means definitely I need to take a B. This whole guy has a star. That means I can take zero, I can take one, or whatever. I take, I take zero. So I don't take anything from here. So by far I have B. I don't take anything from here. And I have another B. So I have B, B. So I have had A already. I take, uh, sorry, 
a was the previous string for this string i can take b b so another string of this language so is b b let's take another string i want to take a gain from this guy i can take from this guy i thank i take i can take this thing so i have b from this guy i take one times so this a is one definitely i need to take it this guy is optional again let's take don't take it which is zero let's take it and then i have b so the next string would be the next string of this language would be b a i didn't take this guy a b so b a a b is another string for this guy let's generate another string from this language let's go for three okay sorry i'm um, all the things i have generated by far had been one that means i'm taking one of these guys when i say i take two these guys what does it mean let's take two these guys this time so i take the first time i take i take a the second i take i take from this part so it would be a it would be b it would be again a i take from this guy two times so it would be b b i need to take a i need to take b so it would be then a for the this guy is two now right for the first time i want to time to take something from this is a for the second time i want to take from here so it was a from here it is b a this guy i want to take five let's say b b b b and then a and then b so let's back i was saying what does it mean rule about the number of a's and b's in a language that means the grammar of that language that means the grammar of like that language very similar to this one and what was the grammar grammar was something inside the language that gives you some instruction to generate the strings for that language so that's that's a grammar for my language the grammar should be something like that or if you remember the grammar was something like this what was the grammar if I go to the final state, so I'm trying to recap the things for you. So that's another type of the grammar. Grammar should be like this, or grammar should be like this. It gives me, that's an abstract version of the grammar, which gives you some regulation to, general, to generate the uh, strings. So in a language, I want to have some rules to generate the string for that language. That could be like this, or that could be like this like i said both of them are grammars but machine what is what are the machines uh, what are the machines machines are uh, let me see where i'm here machines are something which tell me if the string is accepted or not so i have grammar to generate the language i have machine to say if the string i generate for the language are accepted or not so the question here is there a rule base about the number of a's and b's allowed in a string accepted by fsa represented by the above style a state diagram what does it mean it means can you have a grammar can you have a grammar a language for this machine the answer is yes definitely i can do something like that okay that was a little bit long slide but i wanted to create a correspondence between the thing we have studied by far okay so a finite automata language is a language that is accepted by a finite automation like i said in the beginning of the course uh, we have regular languages we have a machine we have also grammar we have language grammar machine for the regular one we have regular language we have regular grammar we have finite automata regular languages are probably identical to finite automata that's exactly what we discussed if you have a finite automata that means there is a regular language for that and from the other word if you have a finite language if you have a regular language you can have a finite automata for that to generate that that string to accept or reject that okay we can say then that a regular language is one that is accepted by the final auto, finite automata. So uh, a regular language is available that finite automata accept is. We know we know now that the following language is a regular regular language. It's the language consisting only of a string made of A's and B's that have an odd number of B. So what is the answer to this question? What could be the language? What could be the grammar which is compatible with this automata? It says. A language that have an odd number of b 
So for example, if you have a string with even number of B, something like that, that means definitely this automata will reject that. So that means this machine can accept, this machine uh, can accept the language consisting only of a string made of, of A's and B's that have an odd number of B's. That's another way of definition of the language. I'm saying character of my language is A and B. And from the other hand, I say the string, my language could have any A and B, any number of A and B, only odd number of B. So finite automata is something that accepts or rejects a string of the languages. And for any finite automata, we can have a regular language. Okay. So given two set of a string A and B, the concatenation of A and B denoted by A, B, or just A, B is set of X, Y, X belong to A and Y belong to B. Example, we have this a string of A, B, we have this one, so A, B. What is A, B? Could be A, could be A, C, C, could be A, C, D, could be B, C, C, could be B, D, different things we can generate. That means how we can generate from two different set of characters a new set of strings. Note that the concatenation of two set of a string is itself a set of a string. I have a string A, set of a string A, set of a string B, and then I create, generate a new set of a string. Note also, if one of the two set of a string is empty, the concatenation is also empty. That's a very important thing, okay? Uh, the cleanest star, we are familiar with that from the previous weeks. The cleanest star of the uh, the cleanest star of the AA a star means all the possible strings from that those characters. For example, if you have A and BB, that's not that's not a string. That's kind of that's not that's kind of a character. So what does it mean? What is what what is mean a star in here, or clean a star? What is what does it mean? Clean a star of A. If that's A, what is clean a star of A? Clean a star is empty A BB single time happening double time happening of A, and then A, B, B, and so on, okay? So let's go a little bit faster. We are familiar with these, these things already. So we have this kind of these things. Uh, how to, these, these slides are talking about how to generate the cleanest. So you know, you can use the union of the characters, union characters, which are the single ones. You can concatenate together. And finally, you can generate the cleanest stars, okay? I will escape these things and I'll try to go to the machines. To show that a particular language is regular, we can show how it can be built out of the empty string and unit languages, languages made of only one string and these operations. For example, the languages X belong to A, B, clean, clean star of this guy, contains an odd number of Bs, is a language it's a regular language since an equivalent representation of this language is. So that's the representation of the language which has only odd number of B. It could be something like that. Or it could be the shorter case of that could be something like that. So let's generate some, some string for this language to see if the number of B is odd or not. So nothing from A, okay, one B, nothing from A, okay, the simplest case. And nothing from here. It was single B, odd number of B. Let's generate another one. One number of this guy, A, then B, then two of this guy, A, A, and then generate one of this guy, B, and then generate nothing from here, B, and then generate nothing from here. So it was A, B, A, A, B, uh, and B. So it has A, B, A, A, B, B. So three number of Bs. Yeah, so as you can see, that's exactly odd number of Bs. Earlier we saw the language X belong to clean stuff to this guy. X contains an odd number of Bs described by a state diagram of the infinite automation such as above. So this guy is a regular expression that describes the same language. So regular language, regular expression, finite state machine, all of this guy can work on these things. And type three grammars. You remember in grammars we discussed two weeks ago, we said if you want to generate a grammar, you need to have terminal vocabulary and you need to have, you need to have the non-terminal vocabulary. You need to have the start symbol. And also you need to have sets of rules. which says of start from something, 
goes to where where was that it was here you remember we had uh, non-terminal characters we had terminal characters like in here we had uh, initial state and we had rules okay so that was a grammar and you remember type 3 grammars in the Chomsky hierarchy was the type of grammar that should definitely take single uh, non-terminal character in the left hand side and right, right hand side should be something like that it should be a combination of uh, terminal uh, characters or combination of terminal characters terminated by a B Okay, so that was the definition of type 3 grammars, you remember, something like that. So that's the characters, terminal characters, non-terminal characters, initial uh, state, uh, and then the regulation, and that's the regulation. What's the shortest string? Oops, from the regulation, from the grammar, it asks us for the uh, characters. What's the shortest string you can get with the above parameter? Let's go ahead. I'll get S. I should start from here, okay? We don't have the uh, reply in here, so we'll generate it here ourselves. Uh, okay, what could be the shortest one? You start from S. S goes to AI, okay? And then we should substitute AI with something. I'll substitute AI from here. So I have had an A here. Then from here I will have and... Um, so... If I go from S to AI, then S will generate AI for us. Then it will generate A. What to do instead of A in here? I can do another A. If I do another A, I will generate another small A, which is not the shortest string we can generate. So I should jump here as soon as possible. Okay. So then it would be A to BB. So then S goes to a i goes to instead of this a i will put in here goes to a instead of capital a i would put put b b a b b capital b and then instead of this b i have two options i can go for this one i can go for this one if i go for this one i will generate one more b because then again i need to go to here to finish the whole thing in small in terminal characters right so then from here i jump to here so that's the path i start from here i from here i jump to here from here i jump to here so then s to ai capital a and then it would be s it would be to a b b capital b so a b b capital b and then i will go to what i have and here a b b Instead of capital B, I would put in here B. So the shortest string would be then A, B, B, B. The odd number of B. Looks like so crazy. Looks like everything is related to this guy. Looks like we are talking about uh, this, to, this uh, finite state machine which has odd number of the Bs. So that's the shortest. You can practice yourself to see what other uh, expression you can generate yourself I can generate another thing I can say S to AA another AA so it would be A from here it would be A A from here I will go here it would be then A A B B from this guy I would say let's try this one another B so and from this guy another B so it would be A A B B B B right so it would be something like that so that's the grammar Grammar derivation for a string of A, B, 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 B. Okay, so I will go from S to A, A, like I said. How to generate this guy? Definitely that's the type of the question I will ask in the exam. So practice it, please. Practice it as much as you can. So from S, you will go to A, A using this rule. And then from A, A, uh, I will substitute. I will take this rule again. I will take this rule because I want to generate 2a if I use this rule I will have only one single a I want to have double a so when I start from s I should take this rule to go to a capital a then I need to take this one to have another way because if I jump to here I won't have any more a 
and I cannot generate this string, okay? So AA, then instead of A, I will put AA. So I will have capital A in here then. As you can see, then I don't need to have any more A. I need to jump to B then. They will put B, B, B. I don't, I cannot go in here because definitely I need to go from A to B. Okay, so I have B, B. I need two more B. For two more B, I, if I repeat, I need to repeat it again. So I will generate one B and I will take this one to generate the final B. Okay, so that would be the whole story. And you can show that in the graph. You can say I'm from here S, I generate AA. From this guy, I generate AA. From this guy, I generate BB, capital B. This guy, I generate B, capital B. And then I finally generate B. It is called a tree. We can, uh, from a gra grammar, we can drive a tree. Okay, inside the tree, as you can see, it is kind of right linear. Then we go, we we tend toward the right side of the right nodes of the uh, the tree, the branches. Notice the trees always branches to the right, okay? The terminal symbols on the right edge of the uh, tree called the leaves. And there is exactly one non-terminal symbol on the right side until the end. So you'll have one single terminal in here, okay? Uh, what is this equal? This is exactly equal to the uh, machine. When machine accepts a string, when you are in the final state. When the, line, the string is accepted, when you have exactly one thing like that, okay? So, a type tree grammar can be written as a finite state machine, non-terminal rules. Very similar, see? Uh, very similar. I am in a state. So, non-terminal, as you can see, non-terminal guys in here in rules are very similar to a state. I am in a state A. I take the character X, symbol X, and I will go to state B. Very similar. I'm in state A, S. I take a string A, I go to state A. I take symbol A, go to this state. I take these symbols, I go to here, and finally I'm in here. Okay? And it looks like that's the initial state, and that's the final state for us. So then, that's kind of a rule. You can write the rules of a grammar into a machine. So in exam, I may give you a grammar and ask you to generate a, a, a final state, finite state machine for that. Okay, so this grammar could be something like that. I start from state S, I take symbol A, go to a state A, okay, the state A in here. Then I, when I'm in state A, I take A, I will back to A. When I'm in state A, if I take B, B, I go to a state B, okay. When I'm in state B, B, sorry, when I take B, symbol B, I will back to B. And when I'm in B, I take another B, I will go to final state because there is no non-terminal character here. So this, this state machine, this machine uh, is very equivalent to this grammar. See, so that's, a that's a grammar, a regular grammar. So definitely the machine also should be a finite state machine, okay? Any type tree grammar can be converted to any non-deterministic finite state. So definitely we can say it is a finite state machine, but if it is deterministic or not non-deterministic, we don't know. Definitely that's non-deterministic because deterministic is a subcategory of deterministic, non-deterministic also. So let's summarize that in this way. Any type tree grammar can be converted to an equivalent non-deterministic finite automation in this way. That machine could be deterministic also. This means that the language ac accepted by a finite automation is the same as the language generated by equivalent type tree grammar. See, there is a correspondence between these two guys, between the uh, machine, between the grammar, and so on. But there is a, a small point note in here, point in here. The point is the non-deterministic. So any type tree grammar, can be converted to an equivalent non-deterministic, okay? So, until now we have mainly talked about the final automata, which accept and or reject the languages. We can th uh, think also of a finite automata as a language generator. Yes, yes, this guy, this guy can generate languages for us. It can generate, we can generate the strings. You can say I'm here, I receive one A, I go to B, 
I, I will generate a B, go to Q1, generate another, give another A, will stay in here, generate B, I will go in here, uh, then I will generate another A, uh, generate another B, and I will stay here. So it would be A, B, A, B, B. It could be a string of this language. See, I generated a string for this machine using the uh, using the machine and define the, the machine diagram, machine state diagram. I could generate the string from the, the grammar also, from this uh, regular expression also. I can generate it from the uh, grammar also, so we can look different ways at the same thing. Okay, so you can generate the language from the machine also. It might help to note that when you consider finite automata from the point of view of a language generation to understand that non-deterministic finite automata and type 3 grammars represent the same underlying concept. Exactly the thing we discussed in here. We should be very close to the end of the lecture anyway. I'll finish it in five minutes. Deterministic versus non-deterministic finite automata. We discussed that. Like I said, in non-deterministic, you can skip some of the definition. You can have multiple definition. Even you can have empty definition. Okay. One might accept that more powerful devices are possible with non-deterministic -fin non final compared to deterministic one. But that's not the case. Since you have more options and capability, it doesn't mean necessarily the machine you generate using the final state deterministic one is poorer than this guy, more poor than this guy. This guy is not more powerful. That's not the case. And non-deterministic guys, in fact, accept only the same class of languages of DFA. Okay, in other words, for every NFA, there is an equivalent DFA. So, uh, so, you might have multiple kind of NFAs, but definitely for any NFA, definitely you will have one equivalent DFA. <clears throat> That's the thing we need to discuss. In Let me have a look at this thing to see if I can go through in here. I wanted to show you this example. I tried to record the video and put it in the website. There are, I have very good examples in here, but we didn't have enough space to go through them. So for example, you can generate this expressions using the machine in here how you can generate only uh, how you can generate only a using this expression if that's a star is one that means you, i can take only one time of everything inside this parenthesis and since that's plus that means i take in that one time i can take this one or this one i will take a how you generate eight from this machine i am in this here this state is Initial state and final state. Yes, it is possible. So I start from here. I take here A and I would be in the final state. Yes, so it is possible to generate A from this machine. How I can generate? Let's put it two. Let's put it to two. I will take twice. The first time I will take one. The second time I will take from here. Put everything zero in here. So it would be B, B A, zero, A. Sorry, that's zero. Let's get rid of that. So it would be B, B. So First time I will take A, the second time I will take here B with 0 for this guy. So it would be A, B, B. How we can generate A, B, B from this machine? I start from here, I take one A, I'm here, one B I will go here, uh, and another, uh, another B, 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 another B, B, how to go? Yeah, from here I take another B and come here. So A, B, and B, I'm in the final state. How to generate A, B, A, B, A? B, so, so uh, what was that? A, so I don't want to go through that. It is a lot of cases. So I have lots of examples in here. So it could be like that. I would say generate a strings with number of A factor of three. You need to have at least three A. You need to uh, at least to have six A, nine A, and so on. So this machine can generate those strings for you. Another example. Uh, 